Amen. Ben's going to come up and share a few things. So you have a, have a seat a moment. All right. Good morning. You guys can grab a seat. Um, lots going on uh, in Threads this week. Uh, I want to welcome you here. My name is Ben. Welcome to the gathering this morning. Um, like I said, we have a few things going on this week. On Wednesday, we are having an All Saints Day gathering here at the building at 7 o'clock. And this is our chance to pray together and to honor people who have passed away in the last year. So uh, a couple weeks ago when I announced, I said you could bring in uh, pictures or things like that and drop them off with loved ones if, who have passed away in the last year. If that is something you still want to do, you can do that or you can send them by email. Um, but make sure that uh, you send them to Rebecca by Wednesday morning so that she has a chance um, to get those all set for the gathering. So again, that's 7 p.m. right here in the gathering space. Um, also, next Saturday is one of our service Saturdays. We're going to be raking leaves right here in the Millwood neighborhood. So make sure to bring a rake or two and um, any clothing. Who knows what the weather will be? So weather appropriate clothing. And uh, we'll be walking around the Millwood neighborhood and helping out. That starts at 10 a.m. And we'll be right here at the gathering space. Um, so we here at Threads, we like to begin our time um, by saying our welcoming affirmation. So if you could stand up and the sides could face each other and then repeat after me. You are loved. You are loved. You are welcomed. You are welcomed. You belong. You belong. In this place and in God's family. In this place and in God's family. All right, you can grab a seat. Hey, my name is Connor. Um, in light of uh, everything, all the violence uh, in Palestine and Israel, I wanted to share a prayer this morning. Oh God of life and love and peace, we witness the violence and injustice in the Middle East, and our hearts break. Our hearts break for Palestinians. For the victims of violent attacks by the Israeli military. For those being denied water, electricity, and medical care. For those who are refugees, long displaced from their homes. Our hearts break for the people of Israel. For the victims of violent attacks by Hamas. For those who live with fear and insecurity. For those who suffer from the intergenerational trauma of violence. We especially pray that weapons of war be laid down that walls of separation be dismantled, that prisoners be released, that demonizing of the other cease, that political leaders seek the good of all people in Palestine and Israel. O oh God, whose heart breaks for the world, may your justice dwell in the land, may your righteousness abide in fruitful fields, may the effect of righteousness be quietness and trust forever, may the effect of justice be peace and enduring peace. Amen. All right, we're going to go into today's first word, which is out of Hebrews 4, chapter, or I'm sorry, chapter 4, verses 15 through 16. And this says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So we're gonna go into a time of worshiping through music. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we worship together this morning. Separate, even if I'm away. 
prayer out of Psalm 95. So let's begin, I will begin us and then we will go from there. So in verse one it says, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before you with thanksgiving and extol you with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In your hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to you. The sea is God's, for God made it, and God's hands form the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture, the flock under your care. Oh, 
does, okay? So we're gonna pretend something today. We're gonna pretend that uh, we are the Israelites, okay? And they wandered through the, Alden, thank you for being here. I wore him down. Alden came out, he wasn't, he refused, but he, he gave in, thank you, buddy. All right, so Joey, if you change your mind, same with Gid and, and Debs, come on up here. But anyways, so the Israelites, they're, they're wandering in the desert. You guys know where the Israelites were trying to get to? Okay. They were trying to get somewhere called the Promised Land. Does that sound familiar to you? Okay. And, they, and when they were going throughout the desert, they were getting real grumpy. Okay. They were thirsty. They were hungry. Um, it was, you know, a desert's not a fun place to be. So we're going to pretend that we're in a minivan with Moses. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys like that? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have this little skit. And it's gonna be kind of weird because I'm gonna be Moses and I'm gonna be a kid at the same time. So my Moses voice, here's my Moses voice. Hi, I'm Moses. Okay, and here's my kid voice. Are we there yet? Okay, so. So here, here's the deal. When I do the kid voice, I want you to repeat after me. Does that sound fair? So we're gonna practice, ready? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Dude, that was excellent. Well done. All right, you guys ready? Now we're in the van. We're going to the promised land. Ready? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No. so long it took him 40 years that's a long time 40 years of wandering through the desert okay so so this is just a little lesson for you instead of complaining about our circumstances what can we do instead what can we do instead of complaining accept it yes okay what else could we do? It starts with a P. Pray. Pray, yes. There's an old saying. It comes from a prophet named MC Hammer. It's, we got to pray just to make it today. Raise your hand if you know that prophet, MC Hammer. Okay, right on. So you can try that. So I want you guys to say that with me. Ready? You got to pray. Just to make it today. Yes, one more time. You got to pray. Just to make it today. Hammond, don't hurt me. <laughs> okay, so anyways, all right guys, we're gonna I'm gonna pray for you right now. Ready? Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for these kids and just thank you for their hearts for you. Uh, pray as they go through the different circumstances they encounter in their lives with uh, you know the challenges of school, uh, the challenges of you know just waiting in the car, uh, challenges of just 
having t times where you don't feel good, all those things that we go through, um, just pray that they can trust in you and trust that you have everything taken care of. God, you are the generous giver. Help us to always believe that and trust in your uh, plan for our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, way to go. Can I get a fist bump for the road? There we go. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Esther, fist bump for the road. Okay, I did Okay, that's all right. That's okay. It's not the first time I've been denied a fist bump. Okay, so we're good. All right. Okay, so now we're going to get into the adult portion of this. And just so you know, um, we do not have kids' community today um, because it's the fifth Sunday of the month. So the kids are going to join on an awesome job. She made up this little uh, packet of things to do. It says the wilderness. And it's all about what we just talked about. And feel free to grab one of those. They're in the back over that white shelf with the books. And there's crayons, there's colored pencils, and all kinds of good stuff out there. So you can feel free to grab one of those. All right. So um, we're beginning a new series today. How many people get excited when there's a new series? Okay, how about a new series on TV? Right, yes, you're like, yes, new series, okay. So this, this new series, we're gonna look at biblical stories and reflect on the human reaction to dun, 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 when things fall apart, okay? How many people have ever had something fall apart on you? Yes. All right, okay, so you're in good company. Okay, a lot of us have grown up hearing stories about God and His mercy, and we sing songs like Amazing Grace, right? Um, even though most of us who grew up in a church setting are familiar with the narrative of God's grace and forgiveness wiping out our mistakes, it's not easy to remember how that comes into reality when we're in the middle of the disaster or we fall into disobedience or despair. But we all do. We all have these seasons or moments of meltdowns. Raise your hand if you've had a meltdown recently. Okay, see, it's funny because we think we outgrow that at the toddler stage, but it continues long after that, right? Okay, that's why it's important to reflect on the stories that we have of people falling apart in their difficult circumstances and remember how our human weaknesses and chaos Meet God's overflowing grace, extreme patience, never failing faithfulness, and steadfast love. God's got this, okay? Even though we do not. So, uh, there's a little background here. And by the way, I just need to give credit where credit is due. Um, Alice Goodrich came up with this whole beautiful spiritual talk, so I just want to make sure she gets the credit. All I'm doing is just delivering it. So, thank you, Alice. All right. Sorry if that embarrassed you. My apologies to you and your family. Okay, cool. All right, so anyways, um, today we will be in a small group discussion, okay? Um, we're going to have, we're going to be looking at a story that occurs in Numbers chapter 20. How many people, when they think about the Bible, their favorite uh, section in the Bible is Numbers? Yeah, Numbers. That's where I like to go, okay? This is Numbers chapter 20. God has led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, and they've been wandering the desert for nearly 40 years. By this point, they've been wandering for a long time, and it's come with a lot of complaining, as we saw in the skit earlier. They've complained about their situation. They've complained about the food. They've complained about God. They've complained about Moses' leadership. They've gone so far as to tell Moses that they would have rather died in slavery in Egypt than to be on this journey. Patience is wearing thin, as you can imagine. The Israelites are thirsty, they ask for water, which on the surface, that feels like a pretty reasonable request, right? They're in the desert, they're thirsty. You know, that'd be something that we could ask God for, right? Um, the trouble with Moses is that it falls in the middle of all their grumbling. So it feels like one more thing. It's like, gosh, gosh, okay, so we're going to read Numbers 
chapter 20, section 2 through 13, if you want to follow along in your Bible. It's again, uh, Numbers 20, 2 through 13. All right? Now, there was no water for the community, and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled with Moses and said, If we had only died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord, why did you bring the Lord's community into this wilderness that we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no grain or figs, grapevines or pomegranates, and there's no water to drink. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the staff, and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community, so that they and their livestock can drink. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock, and Moses said to them, Listen, you rebels, we must bring you water out of this rock, or must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. So we can point out some obvious mistakes that Moses made. For one thing, he seemingly took credit uh, for providing the water for God. He was like, we, I don't know if you noticed that, listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? I never caught that before. I was always like, oh, okay, I get that now. Um, also, God commanded him to speak to the rock. Yes, actually, let's see. Speak to the rock. You're right. He wasn't supposed to, to strike it. Yes, that's right. Okay. So, um, we could point to the numerous examples in the Bible of God giving specific instructions to somebody. And those instructions were getting disobeyed. They were, you know, there was consequences following. But because of the wording and limited information, it could be interpreted that God pro prohibits Moses from entering the promised land because of this one mistake. Factually, it's just not clear that God's punishment to Moses is directly because of that one incident. God references Moses' lack of trust as the reason for not being able to to the promised land. We don't know where Moses' heart was, but God did. Our focus takeaway from this story is how God was and remains to be faithful, even in the middle of us falling apart. God provided for God's people and was present with them even in the midst of their anger, mistrust, and complaint. So, in just a minute, we're going to break into some small groups, and um, in the small groups, we're going to uh, start out by focusing on Numbers 20, 2 through 13, so that passage that we read earlier, okay? And so feel free to familiarize yourself with that again, if you need to. Um, each group will have a little packet, and in this packet, it's going to have a list of discussion questions. There's also a fun question in there at the beginning. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I hate to be a spoiler alert, but it has to do with Jay's awesome sweatshirt. Any guesses what it would have to do with? Halloween, yes. So it might be a little spooky question there. Okay, so remember that someone shares something personal in the group, make sure to have their permission before sharing it back. So I'll, I'll pass the mic around. Um, after you guys have had some time to discuss and give you a chance to um, have a spokesperson that's willing to just share what your group came up with, okay? And um, also, it would be really helpful if you had one person that could be like a recorder 
and jot some notes down of what people have been saying. Okay, it doesn't have to be anything lengthy, but just a general uh, kind of the highlights of your discussion. Okay, I'll also give some time warnings to help keep uh, groups on track. And it's a good practice to pray before engaging in, in scripture. So I will do that right now for everybody. God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for uh, the fact that your word, uh, even though it was written a long time ago, it's still relevant today. Um, we have times where we go through life and we just complain and get angry and uh, we just get so upset about sometimes the littlest things. Uh, God, help us to gain uh, perspective. Uh, really remember to trust in you, even in the most difficult circumstances. Just pray for everybody today that um, this word can uh, just be embedded in their hearts and in our hearts, and just pray uh, just for your Holy Spirit to be here with all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so um, Alice is going to pass out some handouts here. But what I'd like to do, if we could get into groups of like maybe five or six, I think that would be a good size, um, just around, uh, around you or nearby you, um, and just and have and, uh, Alice will come around and give out the handouts. Actually, Carmen and Alice will do that dynamic duo. Okay, so go ahead and find a group about five or six, and we'll get it started here. And if your group is seven, then it's okay too. And just so everyone's clear, um, I'm going to give you guys about 15 minutes for the side one and about five minutes for side two. That's about what we gauged uh, for the amount of time. So 15 minutes to start. If you want to reread oh, re Numbers 20, 2 through 13, that might be helpful for your group if you want to.
ladies and gentlemen, uh, give yourself a pat on the back for having some great conversations um, and just really engaging in this passage and these questions. So we're going to bring it back together here. And I know I told you we were going to do half and half, but a lot of some groups were um, still in the first part. Some groups were already in the second part. So we're going to just stop here. And if I could get one representative from each group just to share a couple brief insights. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, just one or two things that you think the group or yourself came up with uh, that was really, uh, you know, insightful from this this discussion. So we have a bunch of some Harold. Thank you so much, Harold. Let's give Harold a round of applause for starting off. Yes, we can do better than that. Let's give Harold a round of applause. Yes. Thank you. Over here, 
volunteers coming? You're looking like you're. Oh, never mind. Just kidding. We have. He attempts to hire Balaam to put a curse on the Israelites in hopes that that would weaken them enough so that Balaam could drive them away from his land. God then comes and speaks to Balaam and tells him not to curse the Israelites, so Balaam tells Balak that he won't do it. Balak starts pleading with Balaam to curse the Israelites. Instead, what follows is the series of blessings to Balaam. And it, um, over the Israelites to quote one of these blessings and this is Numbers 23 19 through 20 God is not human that God should lie not a human being that God should change God's mind does God speak and then not act does God promise and not fulfill I have received a command to bless God has blessed and I cannot change it. All of this, including a talking donkey, which is totally just a thing that happens in the story, okay, um, happens without the Israelites being aware of it. While the Israelites are thrown in their discomfort, they are unaware of all the ways that God is faithful in protection and blessing. I often wonder, this is a bad side note, but I often wonder if the talking donkey and Shrek came from the Bible. Does anyone ever wonder that? I don't know. I apologize if that was not okay to say. Okay, 
So, in conclusion, we all struggle. We encounter anxiousness, physical hunger, anger, and frustration. We all fall apart. That's human. God is with you through it all. I'll leave you with this thought to consider this week. How does considering God's constant blessing in obvious and unknown ways influence how we approach our daily challenges? So one more time just to think about this question. How does considering God's constant blessing influence how we approach our daily challenges? Okay? And um, on that note, we're going to uh, go into a time of worship through song, okay? And actually, just kidding, well, we are going to do that, but we're going to have something called communion response. And uh, so if you want to come up here and uh, there is, we have regular bread in the basket, we have gluten-free bread over here, and we have grape juice, and this is a chance just to, you know, get right with God or talk to God and say, hey, God, these are the ways I've fallen short or the ways I've, I've messed up. Can you please forgive me? And taking that body and blood, that is just a symbol of the sacrifice Jesus gave up for us. And so it's like dipping that in. I always think of it as, you know, once you're doing that little, um, that practice of eating the bread and, and, the, and the grape juice, and it's like a chance to just Say, God, I give you all the things I've messed up. Please take those for me. All right, so, and uh, Willis is going to play a song um, in worship, and so we'll begin now.
Uh, so we're just going to wrap up with this thought. Um, it's really cool, this last line of the song. You always find me in between the thunder and the lightning. So as we're facing challenges, we're facing things that don't go our way, the thunder and the lightning, help us to just turn to you, God, and just help us to remember that you have everything in your control. And on that note,